Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies and loving kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for the ability to come together as a church as we begin 2024, our year-long celebration of 10 years as a church. 10 years, uh, we are stepping into a new season, a new chapter, uh, a new phase in our life as a church and as individuals that belong to the church and families, Lord God. We pray that you would position us, position us for this new season, Lord God, so that we would be ready to receive all, like the song said, all that, we, that you have for us, we can receive it, Lord God, without hindrance, without delay. I pray for the word that we will go forth today, that it will speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, what I'm going to share today is basically an introduction or a reason of why, what we're going to do next week. Why, Pastor, what are we going to do next week? Starting tomorrow, which is Monday, everybody say Monday, Monday. up to Friday, everybody say Friday, so that means not Monday and Friday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will be gathering together in, as a church downstairs in the metro space for what we call Prayer and Presence Night. Amen? Prayer and present night. Now, New Life Maine had just finished their prayer and fasting. And so people are wondering, why did we just call it prayer and fasting? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain that in a while. Amen? But I, I just love it that on the last night, Friday, uh, they asked me to come online via Zoom to pray for the network churches. And as I was there, Pastor Edwin began to talk about the reason for prayer. And he said the reason for prayer is so that we can have the presence. So he says prayer and presence always go together. And I said, and that's why we call our nights prayer and presence night. Because we don't just want to pray. We want to pray so that the presence of God would manifest, show up in our meetings. Amen. Amen. So, here's my challenge. I challenge you to come at least one night. It's not an encouragement. It's a challenge. I challenge you to come one night. As early as 6.30, the doors will be open in the metro space. And up to... Nine? We'll see. We'll see. We'll try to end at nine, but you know, sometimes when you're done, when God's done, He's done. But when He's not done, you cannot end it. Amen? All right? So we, I want to challenge every single one of you. If, you. if it's your first time, then we want to invite. But if you call New Life North Metro your home, I want to challenge you to be there, to make it a point to show up maybe just one night. Maybe you've shown up one night before. Now I want to challenge you to show up two nights. Maybe you've done two nights before. I want to challenge you to show up three nights. Maybe you've done three nights before. So I want to challenge you to show up four nights. Maybe you haven't done four nights. So I want to challenge you for... You haven't done, no? Oh, Pastor, I've been there every night before. Wow, okay, now I want to lift up the challenge. Maybe you can fast this time. Amen? Why am I doing this? Because I don't want us to remain the same. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. We're not going to do the same anymore. We're going to step up. We're going to, we're, you sang the song, here's my life. Come on, why don't you show up one? Now, I understand if some of you work during that time. Totally understand. And I also understand that you can take a leave for one night. Or two nights. Or five nights. What is your priority? 
my work. Okay, praise be to God. But can the work give you maybe one or two or three nights free? Well, I don't know, Pastor. I've never tried. My dad told me this. You have not because you ask not. The reason, when you don't ask, you have a no. So not asking is automatic no. But if you do ask, there is a 50-50 chance of getting a yes. Not asking, 100% chance of no. Asking, 50% chance that they may say yes. So what's I like the odds with 50-50. So if you're working during that time, why don't you ask your boss, Boss, you want to come with me to try Noma Mall? Invite your boss. Come on, are you there? Invite your boss to be with us. Why? Because we want to see God move in a way that maybe we have not seen in a while. And so we're going to come together and we're going to believe God. Every night, we're going to have a different theme. Oh, yung mga tulog na dyan, gising na po. Every night, we're going to have a different theme. Amen? But the whole, the whole five nights are going to be governed by a set of scripture. And that scripture will be Psalm 23. So we're going to be going through Psalm 23 every night. But every night, we're going to be focusing on a different aspect of Psalm 23. And I believe it's going to bless you. Amen? So tomorrow night, we're going to begin. Amen? And our theme for tomorrow night is the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Meaning, we're going to talk about God provision for you this 2023. How many of you need God to show up in area of provision in your life? Then see you tomorrow. 6.30, we're already going to be welcome people in, people in at 6.30. May, air, may aircon po. Don't worry. You might not even be sitting down. We're going to worship God. We're going to pray. And we're going to expect His presence to show up. And we're going to, when the presence comes, we're going to expect answered prayers. Amen? So that's why my message today is called Prepare the Way of the Lord. Because that's what we're doing. What we're going to do in these five nights is we're going to prepare the way of the Lord. What do you mean by that? Does the Lord need us? Let's look at Scripture. Are you ready? Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 8. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, here's the prophecy. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. So this is the prophecy. It's talking about the Messiah that before the Messiah comes, there will be a messenger that will come before the Messiah and that Messiah and the Messiah, and he will prepare the way for the Messiah. Verse 3 says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness. What is that person crying out? Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Amen. So now, what is this? Who is this? Verse 4. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Verse 5, Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him, and all were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Verse 6, Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Verse 7, And he preached, saying, There comes one after me, who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. All right, so here we see, here we see in this scripture, how do we say it? It's like a back and forth. It is God declaring 
that there is a messenger that's going to come and that messenger is going to prepare his way, the way of the Lord. Amen? Did you hear it? And he's going to, and then there's prophecy regarding the messenger. And in the second part of the scripture, the messenger is now speaking about the Lord. Do you hear me? So it begins with the Lord declaring about the messenger, and then it ends with the messenger declaring about the Lord. All right? So why am I bringing this up? Because it's very clear here that for God's will to be done, He sets certain patterns. He sets certain things in order. When God does something, He usually puts order or a, a pattern in which how we do it in order that we can see the results which God has for us. It was prophesied. Well, what does it mean to be prophesied? It means it was declared by men of old, Scripture declared by Scripture regarding the will of God. What is the will of God? The will of God is that the Messiah would come. And who is the Messiah? Who is the Messiah? In this Scripture, we're talking about Jesus. But before Jesus would come, there needs to be a preparation. Are you there, church? Before Jesus can come, there needs to be a preparation. Why? See, how did John prepare for Jesus? Are you listening to me? How did John prepare for Jesus? What did he do? Very good. That's why he's called John the... He's not called John the Baptist because he started the Baptist denomination. Naintindihan mo. He's John the Baptist because that's what he did. He went around baptizing. Now, what did John baptize? Did he baptize regarding the new birth? See, what we talk, what we talk about baptism today, we talk about baptism into the new birth. Meaning we recognize with Jesus' death, burial, and then eventual resurrection. And when we get baptized, we understand that our old person was dies in Jesus Christ. We go under the water to, to say that that old person is buried. And when we come out of the water, we are a new creation in Christ. It's identifying. It doesn't do it for you, but it's an identification. It's a sacrament in a way to show a spiritual truth from a natural, doing something natural. Okay? John did not do that. John did not baptize the new birth because Jesus had not died yet. What did John baptize? John baptized into remission, how to say, recognizing or allowing people to know that they are sinners and that they need a Savior. It is the baptism of repentance. What is, the, what is repentance? Knowing that I miss the mark knowing that I can't save myself, and now I turn to Jesus, knowing that only He can save me. So about when He baptized, it was basically saying two things. Number one, that Jesus, I need to acknowledge that I need, this, I need you. And number two, as political, a political saying that now I am no longer living for myself, I am living under your subjection saying, I'm now a follower of Jesus. But they were usually following John the Baptist. So every time they were baptized, they were following John the Baptist. But in the essence that John the Baptist is following the Messiah. Amen? Are you there? Is this too much information for you? See, what was John the Baptist doing? He was preparing the way for the Lord to come. Or better, He was preparing the people for Jesus. Because if people were not repentant, then they would not receive what Jesus had to offer. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Meaning if people didn't acknowledge that they sinned, then Jesus came to forgive our sins. Oh, I don't need you. I'm already living, you know, I'm... A, 
I'm living under the law. I'm fine. I'm just doing my... No. He was saying that we need forgiveness. We need what Jesus is bringing. And that's why you need to prepare yourself. Because if Jesus shows up and you're not prepared, then you might miss what He has for you. I don't want you to miss what God has for you in 2024. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I'll miss you. And I don't want to miss a thing. How many of you were singing that when I was saying that? Were you singing it in tune? That's important. Who said yes? <laughs> Come on. You see, what's the reason for what we're doing this week? It's to prepare us. It's not for Him. Of course, it's for Him. But really, it's for us. It's to prepare you and I because God's going to do something this year. And if you're not ready for it, you might miss it or isasayang nang natin when it comes to us. Are you okay? Tenth year, new chapter, new season. We have to be ready for it. Oh, Pastor, two years pa lang ako. Sige, kasama ka na. Even if you've been here three weeks. Come on. Because when the ship moves, if you're in the ship, even if you've just been here for three weeks, kasama ka pa rin. Don't want to close our eyes. Don't want to fall asleep. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> so what happens? What does John what did John do? John prepared the way so that the people, having been baptized into repentance, knowing that they are being prepared for the Messiah, when the Messiah shows up, they have hearts repentant, hearts open, ready to receive all that He has to offer, and yet still, they missed it. A lot of people missed it, even with John. Amen? Are you here? What is it that God wants for us? Do you have Jesus? Amen? Do we have Jesus? Are we disciples of Jesus? So what is it... I, Pastor, I'm already a child of God. I, I have the Holy Spirit living in me. What is it that I need? Why do I need to do this? Let's go to another scripture. Are you ready? You sure? Matthew 17. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother. Who did Jesus take? Who are these people? No, no, who are the three of them? Who are the three? Yes, they are the disciples. These are the, actually, kume hierarchy, these three were, you know, one, they were one of the first to be called by the Lord. And they have, you know, Jesus would usually pull them aside. It's usually Peter, James, and John. If you would add one more, it would be Andrew. All right? So these are people who gave up their lives to follow Jesus. Yes? Are, are, is that us? Can we say that we are disciples? Now, after six days, we're going to pray five days lang. Eh. Okay lang yan. We'll start with today, para six days. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John brought, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. What did he do? He took his disciples higher. He took his disciples higher. Now we have to understand, wasn't all of them. 
there were three that he took and brought them higher. Amen? Now my question is, the invitation is for all of us. But the reality is, maybe not all of us might want to go higher. How will we know? You know, we were, we were in a training yesterday. Nag-train kami for a, a new, a new, ano, a new, so, something we can offer to those of you who are in the workplace. It's, co- it's called Beyond Success by John Maxwell. It is a program, a seven-week program, and it was very good for the workplace. But they were saying, you know, if you want, if you want more, you're going to have, you know, th- we talked about personal development. And if you want more, you're going to have to do some, something more. Amen? Look at the person beside you. Say, see you next week. Five days. Amen? Uh, smile lang dyan pag may time. <laughs> Jesus led them up by themselves and what happened he was transfigured before them and what does that mean his face shone like the sun his clothes became as white as light and behold moses and elijah appeared to them talking with him then peter cried out and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. How many of you know it's good for us to be there when the Lord comes in all His glory? Amen? See, when Jesus was transfigured, He kind of showed them how He really looks like when He was not clothed in an earthly body. What Jesus did is He showed them how He would look when he would raise from the dead, he showed them how he would look in his full glory. God has been showing us time and time again throughout the years through his faithfulness, through his goodness. But you know, I believe we're coming to a time where God's going to begin to show us his full glory. When we're going to begin to see God like we've never seen him before. When we're going to be so amazed that what happened to Jesus? I can imagine. They would just come with me, guys. Okay, Lord, we've been following you for three years. Okay. And all of a sudden, and he just, what's going on? And then they see Moses, they see Elijah, they see these two pillars of the faith talking to Jesus. He was shining brighter than them all. He was shining. The, his glory was seen. You know, I'm praying that this year we will see the glory of God like we've never seen it before. They were not expecting it, but then they were like, wow, it's good that we're here. Tell your neighbor, it's good that we go to prayer and presence night. Now, my only, it's not a concern, but my only thing is that we come tomorrow and there's like 500 people in the metro space. That's going to be wild. Imagine 500 people, we're all standing together. Okay, God, show up! Okay, Amen? If we desire it, He will. Let's go, let's continue. Then Peter answered and said, let Lord, it's good that we should be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, do not be afraid. And when they lifted their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. You see, what's going to happen is we're not here to promote an event. We're not here to promote the the prayer and presence night. 
Because if, the, if it's about the night, then it's building wrong altars. We're coming together for Jesus. To lift up one name, and that is Jesus only. We're not lifting up an agenda. We're not lifting up answered prayers. Although we do want to see answered prayers. We're coming because we want an encounter with Him. And when we get an encounter with Him, whatever you need, He can supply. He can provide. Make sure you come for the right motives. Let's not come to build our temple or build our prayer mountain for our prayers. and our. Don't come for your answered prayers. Come because you want Him. That when you open your eyes, you're not going to see anything else but Him. Jesus only. Jesus only only amen and that's our heart's desire we don't want to we don't want to you know wow galing nam ah my prayer is that after this week we don't leave it and say ang galing ng prayer and presence night no that's building an altar to elijah and to moses let's uh, my prayer is that every night you leave and you're saying Lord. Wow, God. And that's why those of us who are leading, you know what we're going to be doing? We're going to be, Lord, show up, please, Lord. <laughs> show up. Because that's what we want to happen. We want Him to show up. We want not just to show up, but the glorified, transfigured, supernatural, seeing God we want to see God for who He really is. Not how our situation shows Him to us, but who He really is. Amen. Amen. Galing mo mag-hype up, Pastor. This is not hype. This is real. Now, as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. What is Jesus saying? Guys, don't, say, don't tell anybody about this. Why? Because they're not ready. They're not ready to handle what you saw. You were ready. See, that's what's so important. Is when we make ourselves ready, we will be able to handle, to see things that many, but other people will not be able to see. Do you want that? Do you want to be able to see God in His full glory and not just saying, oh, parang iba. Parang there's something different about you. Oh, nga eh. And you cannot just say, you can say, because I saw Jesus in His full glory. Because Jesus said, keep quiet. But you know how people are. I'm sure when they went down, Peter called Andrew, Drew, grab his Lord. Kakaiba siya. He began to shine like light. Like, what? What are you smoking up there? No, grab it. And then I heard, I heard Abba's voice. And I started to shell, tremble and shake. He spoke to me. No, because, because there's some people are not going to get it. But those who are there, they're going to get it. They're going to understand. And then what happened next? Let's jump a bit to verse 14. And when they came down to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For, as often, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Now, Many people put Peter as the one who prayed, right? But it said, when they came down, when they came down, when they came down, when they, not when Jesus, when they, who was they? Who was they? Come on, guys, kaya niyan. Jesus, 
Peter, James, and John. But when they came down, somebody had already prayed. So it wasn't Peter, it wasn't James, it wasn't John. Are you there? I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from this very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move over there and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. See, what happened is that Jesus in His glorified form, had just showed His full glory to three. And then when He came down, He began to show His glory once again. Not in the transfigured form, but through miracles, signs, and wonders. See, Jesus healing that boy and casting out that demon could only be done by the glory of God. And that's why Jesus talked about faith. See, what is faith? What is faith? Is it just believing in something? Faith begins, number one, when the will of God is known. But faith is not just in the will of God. Faith is in God first. So what is he saying? He's saying that the only reason I was able to cast out this demon well, of course, he's Jesus. But they weren't because they were just relying on themselves. On my ability to do something. My ability my ability to pray. My ability to, to do something. No, it's not about you. That's why when you cast out demons, you don't need to shout. Can I be honest? Why do people shout? Because they're Come out! Jesus, die, come out! <laughs> you don't need to shout. Authority, authority can be said in a so calm voice. Come on, did you hear me? Just because when you pray and you begin to shout when you pray doesn't mean God cannot, He's deaf. You have to shout louder so He can hear you. No, God can hear you clearly. Even if you don't open your mouth, God can hear you. Are you there? He's saying, guys, it's not about what you can do. That's why he says, how long must I be with you? It's not about what you can do. It's about what he can do. It's about faith. Amen? And then he goes on to say something. This type can only come out through prayer and fasting. Now, many people think that prayer and fasting is the key to cast out demons. No, what is prayer and fasting? Basically, prayer is having faith in God and having faith in His Word and declaring that Word to be true and declaring Him to be true. Amen? Faith, prayer is basically having faith in God and His promises. What is fasting? Fasting is, number one, preparing yourself to receive or preparing yourself to trust God because without God's help, you will not be able to fast. Why? Because, can I tell you, especially Filipinos, pag gutom ka, you are not just hungry, you are hangry. When Filipinos get hungry, they get hangry. And you don't want a hangry Filipino. Imagine, sasabihin ko lang, we're not going to have rice, what? No rice in the meal, what kind of meal is this? No carbs, what? Kanin is life. Kanin is blood. Kanin is everything. Come on. 
without the grace of God, without totally relying on God, it's hard to fast. True fasting is when you trust God and say, Lord, I'm not going to suffer when I fast. I want to share something with you that maybe can encourage you. Prayer and fasting are expressions of our faith. It would never be wrong for a Christian to pray or fast when he's trying to accomplish the will of God. Actually, it's sometimes good or encouraged that we pray. Of course, you will never fulfill God's will if you're not praying out the will of God. And sometimes we encourage ourselves to fast. However, to believe that your prayer, the action of praying and fasting is the source of your answered prayer is wrong. Prayer and fasting is not the source of your answered prayer. The source of your answered prayer is God. Can I say that? The same with communion. Your healing doesn't come from taking the bread and drinking the juice. It is not the source of your healing. The source of your healing is God. And God only. What does prayer and fasting do? It builds up our faith. These things, praying and fasting, are expressions of faith in God. And faith in His power to accomplish His will. Including casting out demons and healing the sick. Amen? So why do we do that? It's to build faith. Hebrews 11, 6. want to end with this. Actually, I'll not end with this. I'll end with something else. But Hebrews 11, 6 says this. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Who is God to you? If you need healing, God is your healer. If you need provision, God is your provider. If you need sanctification, God is your sanctifier. If you want to surrender your life, He is your Lord. Come on, who is God to you? Because if you don't acknowledge Him for who He is, you will never receive what He has for you. You must first believe in Him and then His promise. What are God's promises? All God's promises, there's always an action. And when you do the action, you will get the, the reaction, the consequence, or as Hebrews 11, 6, the reward. Amen? First Him, and then obedience to His Word, then we receive the reward, or answered prayers. Amen? Do we want to see answered prayers? Is prayer and fasting the only the way to receive answer prayers? No. What's prayer and fasting? It's our faith. It builds our faith in the God who answers our prayers. Amen. And it prepares us. Like John the Baptist prepared the way to receive Jesus. Our prayer and fasting, our prayer and presence nights is preparing us for God to show up and do what only He can do. Amen? As we end, just a couple of reminders as we go next week. Are you ready? Jesus says, And when you pray, you shall not be like hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by all. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. See, what are these people looking for? They're praying to get attention. So when people see, oh, grabe yung prayer niya. That's the reward. It's not an answer to their prayer, but they got the attention. See, we're not after the attention. Come on, we're not after the attention. But you, say me, when I pray, I go into the room, and when I've shut the door, I pray to the Father 
who is in the secret place. And your father sees in secret will reward you openly. See, what is it saying? Our prayer to God, when our focus is just Him, then we will get the answer. See, the reward is God showing up and God answering our prayers. Amen? Verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with sad countenance. For they disfigure their face that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, they have the reward. So when you fast, don't tell everybody, Hey guys, I'm fasting. Come on. I've been fasting five days now. We don't need to let people know we're fasting. Because if you're just doing it so people will say, Smiley face. Check. Thumbs up. If you're just looking for attention... And then when you see them, you're like, what's wrong? Oh, I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten in five hours. It's just too much. It's just the, the burden and the bearing, this weight of this fast. It's just, it's glorious. You just, <laughs> see, I tell you, when you fast under the anointing of God, you will be stronger than ever. You will be smiling. There will be a different glow on your face. You'll be like Daniel in the midst of everybody eating the meat and Daniel sanctifying himself. You know, when you fast under the anointing of God, that's why please don't fast if the Lord didn't tell you to fast. Amen? Only fast when you believe God is telling you to do it because then you will be anointed to do it as well. If you're just looking for attention, you'll get your reward with people say, oh, kain ka na ito tinapay, oh. kain ka na kawawa ka naman. No. But you, me, when I fast, anoint your head. We need the Holy Spirit. Wash your face, smile, so that you do not appear to men as fasting. But your Father who sees in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen? What is that? We are preparing ourselves for His glory, then we will see His glory. Are you ready for your answered prayers? Are you ready for God's glory to be seen in your life? What are you willing to do? We need to prepare the way. Amen? So we want to encourage you. This is one way. This is not the only way. There are many ways we can prepare the way for God's glory to show up in our life. But one way we can is we can come together as a church for this week. We can believe God. We can pray and believe God for His presence to show up and for Him to speak to us individually. Amen? Amen? Anybody ready to do something new this week? Anybody ready to do something new this week? Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you love us and you have a great plan for our life. But sometimes we get stuck in routine. We get stuck in the things that we think that we know what to do and we, 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 we miss out on moves. We miss out on you doing something extraordinary and something. Lord, our prayer is that this year we don't want to miss it. We don't want to miss your move. We don't want to miss what you're doing in our what you've prepared for us. We want to be ready to receive that which you've already prepared for us to walk in. Living the good life which you have prearranged and made ready for us to walk in. You know the plans that you have for us and they are good, not evil. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. Lord, Thank you that we have the ability to know and to hear and to trust you with our destiny, with our eternity, with our tomorrow. We trust you. We trusted you with our yesterday. We trust you with our today. And we trust you even more with our tomorrows. Lord, help us. Give us the grace and speak to us clearly what you want us to do. And as we come together next week, we pray for your glorious presence to show up because 
It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.